the mirror. Can you hear me? Over there. Is that... Yuma? Is anyone there? Hello? Yuma! Oh, you guys? Great. This... hand... Let's put you down first. Don't worry about it. Samir's tried a lot of things, but this hand is clearly formed by the Abyssin's field ability and cannot be broken. It can only be destroyed by defeating the Abyssin. We were careless and got hit by the Abyssin's sneak attack. I was grabbed before I even knew what was happening, and I could feel that hand absorbing my strength. Where's Samir now? Tracking down the Abyssin, though I fear that one person is no match for such a beast. She needs your help. Oh no, if Samir is also... Let's go, now. Embarrassing. How can you laugh at a time like this? Well, I saw you coming, didn't I? I can relax now. You've got this. Did you find that abyssant? Yep, we tangoed a couple of times. Wasn't too hard. Oh? So, how did you... Ugh, nasty trick, that. The thing was clearly right in front of me, but just as it attacked, a weird hand appeared behind me. Well, I don't have eyes in the back of my head, so... So... It was devious! How was I to know it would pull a stunt like that? Let me have another go! I'll whack it right upside its head! <sighs> eh, it won't be very far. Hurry up and take care of it! I don't want to be hanging around all the time. Hang tight. We're on it. Hang in there. <laughs> Got it. Hold your horses. We have no idea what it's capable of. Don't lower your guard and watch out for any sneak attacks. I didn't feel my strike land just now, but when its hand touched me, the abyssant was injured. How strange. Prob Lynn! Stay calm and listen to me. I couldn't feel anything on my last attack, just like the one before. Having said that, the touch of that hand feels completely different. This time, that thing grabbed me. The only difference between the two attacks is obvious. This is probably the true power of the field. I'll leave the rest in your hands.
exciting battle. Lucky I asked you to help, or I might have had a bit of trouble. Yes, but it's a shame that this Abyssin didn't have the Crystamax. I hope Larson won't be too disappointed. The Abyssin field here has already dispersed? Yes. Fields only appear where there is an Abyssin. We'd never seen an ability like this before. And if it hadn't been for Samir and Huma giving us such valuable insights, I fear we might have found it more difficult. Good. Anyway, those two should be out of trouble by now. Let's regroup. I've told you a thousand times not to be so rash. Hmm. I wouldn't have been if it wasn't to save you. You're the one who got caught first. You... That's enough. Everyone's okay, and that's the main thing. But the next time there's an abyssant with unknown abilities, don't take it so lightly. Hmm. If it hadn't got the drop on me, there's no way. Whatever. Let's just say I owe you one. Is there any word from Silver Coast Research Station? Yes, I just heard from Merrill. The station is safe and sound. Excellent. I guess that means everything's nicely wrapped up. Great work, everyone. Head on back and have a well-deserved rest. All right, let's go. <laughs> Thanks a lot for your help today. If it wasn't for the support of District 9, Mororia wouldn't be able to withstand the growing number of Grayspace Entities attacks. You are welcome. We work for stability and peace for everyone. Oh, I almost forgot. Yesterday, I applied for indefinite stay permission at your accommodation. Just go to the front desk, register your info, and you'll be all set. Thank you, Lin. No hassle. Anyway, Larson's waiting for me to report back, so I'm afraid I can't hang around. I'll see you guys later. Good work today, guys. Hi, Manson, and thanks. Lynn said she'd applied for a residency upgrade for us, and we should come and register our info. Yes, I've already been notified by Lynn. Please wait a moment. The formalities won't take long. Is Lynn a regular guest here? Guest? No, not at all. Sadly, Lynn is a terribly busy person and seldom has the time for leisure. But you two, I get the feeling Lynn cares about you. You're not just ordinary folks, are you? We, uh... Haha, <laughs> I'm just curious, don't mind me. Anyway, the upgrade has been successful. The water heater and air purification system have been turned on, and you're good to go. Have a good rest. Morning, you two. I trust you slept well. Morning, Lin. I don't know if you have time today, but I have something to attend to, and was wondering if you might be able to come with me. Hykros established a research base in the desert, just outside Mororia, dedicated to studying Grayspace entities. Larson has requested that I assist the researchers there as they conduct a crucial experiment. They are preparing to extract a whole Crystamax from a living Abyssant. Having never attempted such a feat before, they hoped headquarters could send an executor to support them and deal with any potential risks. They captured a live Abyssant? It's a long story. Mororia launched a special Grayspace Entity research project a few years back, codenamed Listener. Taking what we know about Grayspace Entity physiology, activity, and habits, the scientists hope to better understand their behavior, interpret their actions, and even, if possible, 
communicate with them. They captured some relatively harmless Grayspace entities as test subjects, and carried out various behavioral and physiological experiments. They even attempted to breed them. Wait, are you saying that this abyssin they're using for the experiment was intentionally bred by them? Well, yes. But what they have is still light years away from being a real abyssin. While it does have a Christamax, it doesn't yet have any field ability and is much easier to handle. So I was hoping you two could tag along. Apart from helping with security, you'd be able to learn firsthand the very latest research results, which should help your understanding of the Grayspace entities. Sounds good, Lin. Lead the way. Thank you so much for your help, Lin. Everyone is in position, and we're ready to begin at any time. How is the subject? I need more details. We have conducted two comprehensive tests on subject number six, Rudolph. Its vitals are stable, as is the artificial Christomax. So how are you going to proceed? Before extracting the target sample, we need to administer a special agent to increase the activation level of the Christomax. This will, however, affect the subject's circadian rhythm and will significantly increase its metabolic rate for a period of time. The subject may become frenzied, a state which needs to be maintained until the Christomax inside it activates. How violently do you think it will struggle? Regarding subject dosage and reaction, we've previously conducted a series of gradated tests, but this dose will be substantially higher than anything we've used before. As such, it's impossible to predict precisely how the subject will respond. So we are here in case it gets out of control? That is correct, Lynn. As soon as Rudolph's Christomax activates, we'll immediately administer an anesthetic, but until then, it's up to you. Understood. Get ready, you two. We're heading into the test area. Prepare the injection! It's losing control. Watch out! Christomax activated. Ready to deploy anesthetic. Oh no, system failure. The anesthetic delivery line didn't respond. Maybe the impact damaged the control pipeline? We need to manually override all four control consoles to reopen the nozzles. ranges. We can proceed with sample extraction. You still seem very nervous, Doctor. Yes, well, we aren't out of the woods yet. I dare not relax until we've successfully extracted the Christomax. We won't need to bother you for any subsequent work, though, so you can leave that to us. Mororia headquarters will be waiting for your good news. I'll report to Larson as soon as I can. Anyway, the anesthetic will wear off soon, so I have to go oversee the sample extraction. Thanks again for all your help. No problem. I guess we'll be heading back to headquarters then. Thanks for all your hard work, Lin. Dr. Clive just sent word that the artificial Christomax has been successfully extracted. I'm happy to see such progress, Larson. Tomorrow, Dr. Clive will hold a small briefing at the press conference center, with the aim of presenting our current research results to other high-level individuals. If we can win more support, 
I'll have more resources to put into the project. This is a very rare and potentially valuable opportunity for us. Dr. Clive hopes the three of you might attend. Oh? Well, hopefully Dr. Clive will have more good news for us too. Let me know when you're ready to go. The press conference starts in a couple hours, but we need to be there early. Hearing the Archon talk, it seems like this is a pretty important press conference, right? Correct. This is the most important discovery to date the whole listener project. Dr. Clive sent me a message this morning, saying he was so excited he couldn't even sleep last night. I can't help but worry if he'll mess up in the press conference. Such an esteemed doctor is that nervous? In the two years since Dr. Clive took over the listener project, he hasn't been able to produce anything of value. I guess this is also a chance to validate himself to everyone, as well as the project. I can certainly sympathize. The doctor, the whole listener research team has been waiting for this day for a very long time. Lynn, I've just received word that the conference venue was attacked, for no apparent reason. What? The venue for the press conference? Yes. Details are still hazy at present, so I cannot definitively say what happened. I'm on my way there now to find out more. According to security logs, the Christamax samples for the press conference had already been sent there. I worry that maybe... Cordon off the whole area. We're on our way. So what's going on in there, Saki? I only just got here myself. We still don't know what exactly is happening inside, but according to those who have escaped, there were gray space entities in there. Gray space entities? How did those things get into Mororia? I sent someone to check Mororia's external defenses, and there's no sign of a breach. Nor is there any sign of a gray space entity's invasion. It's like they just materialized out of thin air. There are currently some issues with the building's internal power supply. Some floors have lost all their powers, while the security and monitoring systems are malfunctioning. I'm arranging a floor-by-floor -floor inspection. There's no time for that. Our priority is to secure those samples. You know I have limited manpower. I need to maintain order, get the crowd out of here, and lessen any negative impacts of the attack. I'll think of something. Has Dr. Clive been informed of what's going on? He's on his way. He'd been resting at the research center, and was thankfully not caught up in any of this. Okay, good. Saki, you take your team and look for survivors on each floor. We'll take over the investigation. Understood. However, you should note that the lift to the conference venue is also currently malfunctioning. You can find and restart the power supply on the ground floor, which should fix the problem.
do you want? Careful, it's too dangerous. is secure and most of the injured are receiving treatment. Unfortunately, the cause of the incident is not yet known, so the press conference will have to be postponed. How's Dr. Clive? I reckon that this could be connected to that artificial Christamax he extracted. He's got a few scratches, nothing serious. He's been taking to headquarters to be patched up. Larson wants us to go there and ascertain the cause of all this. Let's go then. Dr. Clive, I need a straight answer. Can you guarantee that the artificial Christomax is safe now? Archon, during the incident, the Christomax displayed a field ability hitherto unseen in all of our experiments. We need to conduct more comprehensive tests on the sample, and until we do, I am unable to guarantee that it's safe. Dr. Clive, do you have any idea about what could have caused this? That creature in the hall was actually an artificial Christomax parasite in a singer-type droid. It even displayed sentience, which is something a normal Christomax from a gray space entity could never have. What's more, after successfully taking control of its host, that Christomax displayed a field ability we had not seen before. It was totally beyond anything we could have imagined. We incorporated tissue samples from three known abyssins in cultivating this Christomax, but none of them had this ability to pass through solid walls, so... This Christomax seems to have evolved new field abilities during its development. This trait is something we've never seen or even considered before, I admit. Perhaps I was too optimistic and let myself get a little careless. I will take full responsibility for this incident. Moreover, reports from the scene indicate that the out-of-control Abyssin displayed some abnormal behavior before it was defeated. Our information suggests that it seems to possess human-like intelligence, acts with purpose, and even makes human-sounding noises. Lynn, you were the closest to that thing. Do you think it possessed a level of intelligence similar to our own? I'm sorry, Archon. Nothing really jumped out at me. While its behavior was certainly out of the ordinary, I don't think it really has the ability to communicate with us. After all, it's not a real Grayspace entity, just an artificial Christomax, a parasite on a mechanical host. Perhaps it was unconsciously imitating our behavior, and merely mimicking human noises. Gray space entities are communicating with humans. In all of my research, I've never even heard of such a thing. I think I have a good grasp of what transpired now. Our forensics team is analyzing the scene as we speak, and might be able to find something of value. Dr. Clive, I've ordered the artificial Christomax to be transferred to the secure lab at headquarters. You may conduct subsequent safety tests there. I shall be keenly awaiting the results. I believe that covers everything for today. Dismissed. Was there anything else? Actually, Lin, that abyssant. At the time, 
I felt like it was trying to communicate with us too. It also wasn't displaying a clear intention to attack. Before Dr. Clive fired the first shot at least. Huh. So you also think it was trying to talk to us? Miss Lin, it might be a good idea to suggest Archon Larson and Dr. Clive pay more attention to this idea. Hmm. I'll certainly bear your suggestions in mind. Thank you. Captain Saki Fua? Executor? Shirley? I have something important to discuss with you. Do you have time? We're on standby. Then, I'll be waiting for you at the Security Special Forces rooftop. Please come see me as soon as you can. It sounds serious from Saki's tone. Could it have something to do with the last Grayspace Entity Assault? We better go see her then. I'm sorry to call you all here on such short notice. I feel there's something you need to know about Lin. Miss Lin, did something happen to her? Do you remember the sound that the Christomax parasitized puppet singer made when it attacked? Our technicians have analyzed and processed the sound. We've translated what we've got into human speech. for Ruby? If it really came for Ruby, then Lin must have hidden something from us, both about the monster and Ruby. But why would Ruby have anything to do with it? Ruby's identity has always been mysterious. She suddenly appeared beside Lin about two years ago. Lin only said Ruby was entrusted to her by a friend, but she has never said anything about who that friend was. What's more, we couldn't find anything on Ruby. It seems like Lin is intentionally trying to keep Ruby's identity a secret. After the attack, the reason that she denies that she conversed with the monster is she doesn't want us to know about Ruby's involvement in all this. Why did Miss Lin... do that? <sighs> As per regulation, I've submitted everything I've found to Larson. He will soon be holding an inquisition at Cloudtop regarding Lin. But... Before that, I want to see if you two have anything to say. You were there. Did I miss anything that went down between Lin and the monster? Before Dr. Clive suddenly came in and opened fire, the enemy wasn't hostile. It was trying to communicate with Lin. But if Miss Lin wanted to hide this from us, she could have sent Shirley and me away and taken care of it herself. I believe in Miss Lin. She has always acted in the best interest of the people here. There must be something more to this than we know. I also trust that Lin would never betray Mororia, but her actions are, indeed, suspicious. We have to tread carefully for the safety of the city. Archon Larson wants both of you to be there at Lin's Inquisition. We can only hope Lin can explain all this, but I wonder how deep this rabbit hole goes. Let's go in. Don't forget what I told you before you slept. I remember. Then wait here for me. I'll be right out. Uh-huh. Let's go then.
Oh, looks like we have two new faces in our midst. Oh, let me introduce you. These two are Executor and Shirley from District 9. This is... Hello, I'm Tian Lung. Hey, Lyra, why don't you come and say hi? Greetings, I'm Lyra. Tian Long is District 7's High Executor and is dispatched on a mission. Ms. Lyra is the current president of the Maidalyn Foundation, as well as Archon Larson's special consultant. I'm sorry that my work required me elsewhere. No, everything happened because of me. Sorry for taking up all your time. Now that we're all here, let's get started. Archon Larson. I believe everyone here already knows about what happened a few days ago at the Listener Conference. Despite how the Puppet Singer was destroyed, and the artificial Crystamax was relocated, it has a significant effect on things. Many have started questioning whether or not Miroria's defense systems are able to withstand gray space entity attacks. These concerns are understandable since gray space entity attacks have never happened inside Miroria. If we cannot guarantee our denizens' safety, it stands to reason that we will lose their trust. Captain Saki Fuwa has doubled the patrols in Mororia, and Lyra will be assisting in upgrading the city's current surveillance systems. However, these are but contingencies and responses to an emergency incident. We need to prevent similar situations from taking place in the future. Lin, Captain Saki Fuwa should have already relayed the results of the investigation to you. Would you please explain why you concealed the fact that the Puppet Singer could communicate with you? And what exactly did it say to you? Now that the Security Special Forces reports are out, there's nothing more I could say other than... I'm sorry, Arkham Larson. I concealed it not because I have an agenda or harbor ill will. There are just some things that I feel are not ready for the public eye. Forgive me for being frank, Miss Lin. This thing has profound influences. If we can't work together and solve this crisis together, I'm afraid... Archon Larson, please let me handle the follow-up to this incident. I promise I'll present a satisfactory answer to everyone. I'll just... need some extra time. Lin, I've trusted you. And I'm willing to believe that there is a reason for your actions. However, I cannot allow you to put the whole city in danger. Archon Larson is responsible for the safety of the entire city. Please understand that, Lin. It spoke Ruby's name. That's the kid who hangs around you. The security special forces have completed their investigation into Ruby's identity and past and found no activities beyond the last two years. Lin, who is this kid? Arkan Larson, I vouch for Ruby that she's always been a good kid. I'll educate her well and be held responsible for all her actions. I don't need you to take responsibility. I only want to know what the relationship between that kid and the artificial Christomax parasitized monster is. I... Security alert. All non-combatants, please proceed to the nearest safe zone. Ruby... Archon Larson, please give the order to lock down all exits immediately. You have your orders, Captain Sakifua. Don't worry about me. Captain, that artificial Christomax suddenly went out of control. We're sending machine guards to suppress it. That artificial Christomax again. What's going on with it? Look, the storage vessel for the artificial Christomax. It's completely shattered. What happened here? The machine guards couldn't stop it. We have to find Ruby. The wreckage went through the room ahead.
Captain Saki Fua. Archon Larsen. Take Ruby to the infirmary and keep her safe. Uh, yes, sir. Lynn, I need an explanation from you. The artificial Christomax has caused many security incidents. I hope now you can see how this thing doesn't just affect you and Ruby, but all of us. Archon Larson, I will give you all the information I have, but I have a request. You can give me your demands, but I can't promise anything. I need you to give me your word that you'll assure Ruby's safety after hearing what I have to say. Ruby is not really a human. She's the result of an experiment trying to fuse humans and grayspace entities. What? Ruby... She's... An artificial grayspace entity. Just like what Dr. Clive did. To a certain extent, yes. Ruby and the artificial grayspace entity in the listener testing ground are the same. That artificial Christomax may be attracted to Ruby. Do you remember who Rubilia is, Archon Larson? Dr. Rubilia, the first supervisor of Project Listener. That kid is a true genius. If it weren't for the accident, she could have achieved much and given much to Mororia. An accident? Two years ago, in a routine collection mission on the surface, Rubilia went missing in a Grayspace Entity attack. Her project was then handed off to Dr. Clive, who used to be her assistant. Wait, what happened to Dr. Rubilia took place two years ago. And that's also when Ruby appeared in Meroria. Ruby? Rubilia? Rubilia used her own genetic code to fuse with the Grayspace Entity in the experiment. That's how Ruby was born. Using human DNA with that of the Grayspace Entity is directly forbidden by Archon Harunobu. What Dr. Rubilia did was... madness! Since her father died, Rubilia's been running those forbidden experiments in her secret lab. I only learned of it when I found her journal by accident. I put a stop to her experiments and sealed off the lab. Out of many concerns, I didn't make it public. Instead, I exiled Rubilia out of Mororia. You mean she didn't go missing because of the Grayspace Entity attack, but it was by your orders? Yes. I... I only wanted this thing to go away at the time. Rubilia's experiments were too extreme. I didn't know what would happen if they went public, so I leveraged my position to conceal it all. If Rubilia really did create a superior abyssant with human intelligence and in human form, but outside of human control, it would be a great disaster for all mankind. Lin, how many like Ruby are out there? Are there any in this city that remain undiscovered? Archon Larson, Ruby is the only test subject left alive. She possesses a human mind. I can assure you that she'll not lose control and become a monster and threaten the safety of everyone. Even if you can prove that Ruby doesn't pose a threat, there's been no change in her situation after she absorbed that artificial Christomax. We cannot be certain if she'll be affected or controlled by the Christomax. Lynn, Executor, and Shirley, please stay here. I'll decide the next course of action after they run a full checkup on Ruby. Larson, I only wish for Ruby to be treated as a human, not a monster locked up in a cage and studied in a lab. I have my own thoughts on this, but I can assure you that Ruby will be safe. Captain Saki Fua, with me. Yes. Ruby is still in a coma. We did a full examination on her, but due to her unique physical conditions, we cannot assess her status using normal human standards. 
Dr. Clive is assessing Ruby's situation, but he informed us that it might be difficult to do so with our current technology, since she's the first human hybrid. Lynn, there must be some research data left behind in Rubilia's lab, right? Yes. Even though I sealed off the lab, I did not destroy the research data. I planned on revealing the whole thing once Project Listener made some progress. We're facing a problem, and the redacted data may hold the key to solving it. We cannot wait any longer. Only you know the location of the lab, Lin. I will need you to take a team and retrieve the research data. Yes, sir. I'll send someone to go with you. The safety of Mororia hangs in the balance, and we cannot afford another accident. Archon Larson has told me all about it. Miss Lin, it seems like you've kept quite a number of things from us. Tian Long? Miss Lyra? Lin, long time no see. Miss Lyra will remain in Mororia to assist us with this investigation. Tian Long will go with you to the restricted experiment zone. Lin, do not disappoint us again. <laughs> oh, you got Archon Larson so mad? If you have time to chit-chat, why don't you contribute to planning our next move? Huh. Looks like we're the ones tasked with the special op. Captain Lin, what dangerous mission will we be going on this time? Why so serious? We're just investigating an abandoned lab, aren't we? Huh? Archon Larson recalled me for an emergency situation, and it turned out to be such a simple mission? Your mission is not just to assist with the investigation, but to keep an eye on me. I am now in your charge. Ms. Lin, that's not a nice thing to say. I'm only here to help you complete the mission, and that's all. Miss Lin, what do we have to know about that lab? There are no security systems installed in the lab, but it holds a great number of Grayspace entity samples. The samples should either be in stasis or deceased, but we really don't have enough information. Stay vigilant. I have relayed the lab coordinates to you. Make sure you've received them. If there are no further questions, let's head out. This is the entrance to the lab. Well, this is a secluded place. I'm impressed that Rubilia could find it. Before Rubilia repurposed it into her lab, it used to be an abandoned factory. I'll take you straight to the testing labs. Stay close, and don't wander off. The lab's primary power has been cut. We'll need to restore the lighting first. The power control console is right over there. This was used as a showroom for data on Phase 1 of Project Listener. Even though the information is already public, you can still take a look around, if you want.
How many things did Rubilia hide in here? The entire Project Listener Phase 1 research is here. We're only seeing a small part of it. Oh? Look out! Better be careful. It's not over yet. Lin, you didn't say the gray space entities may still be active here. Maybe a test subject got free. Stay on your toes and prepare for any surprise attack from Grayspace entities. The lower labs are right up ahead. Follow me. Gives me the chills. The gray space entities in stasis were key subjects used for Rubilia's research. We may be able to find some clues that I missed previously. There are only some research samples here. The key research data is kept in Rubilia's quarters. Follow me. That small room ahead is Rubilia's living quarters. Is Dr. Rubilia living there all by herself? N no way. There's no way we can get through so many gray space entities. She's no mad scientist. There were just things that she had to do. Let's head inside. Maybe we'll find some useful information.
would I tell Archon Larson if I were to go back empty-handed? What is this? Features do not match. Verification failed. Move out of the way. Features do not match. Verification failed. Retrieving alternative data. Features match. Identity verified. Oh. Lynn, Rubilia left this lockbox for you, didn't she? We all saw it. Rubilia has never mentioned anything about it to me. This lockbox. It's really well hidden. Wonder what's in there. <laughs> now I'm curious. I'm not sure what's inside. The internal workings of this lockbox are extremely intricate. Opening it by force will likely damage the content inside. We better take the lockbox back to Miroria first, and see what Archon Larson wants to do with it. Fine. You keep the lockbox safe, Tianlong. This may be the most valuable find in this investigation of ours. Fine, fine. At least it's something to tell Archon Larson. don't want to stay here a second longer than I have to. The facilities have not been maintained for a long time. Other test subjects may have gotten free as well. We should hurry. Saki? How's Ruby? There is no sign of her waking up yet, but all the numbers show her to be in a stable condition, with no fluctuations. Lin, did you get what you need? We've found a lockbox left behind by Rubilia. We are just about to give Archon Larson a report. Archon Larson is still awaiting updates at Cloudtop. Go. I'll stand guard here. I'll notify you as soon as there's any news on Ruby. Thanks, Saki. Let's go. Lin, is there nothing else you can do with the lockbox Rubilia left behind? I'm sorry, Archon Larson. Rubilia never said anything about a lockbox to me. 
It was Tian Long who found the hidden compartment inside by accident. It'll all be for nothing if we can't find any clues to open this lockbox. Archon Larson, this lockbox's model was widely used in the Maidalin Foundation. Maybe I can attempt to decode it without corrupting the data inside. Miss Lyra, how confident are you? Don't worry, Archon Larson. I'll immediately stop whatever I'm doing if something goes wrong, to ensure the data inside remains intact. Miss Lin? Please. The data stored inside doesn't seem to have been fully deciphered. We went through everything... for this? Miss Lin, the data inside the lockbox is incomplete. I cannot decode anything more from it. Only a blurry video clip? Miss Lyra. Could some data be corrupted during the decoding process? No. I assure you, there's nothing I did that would have compromised the data inside. What we saw was the entirety of the data. Why did Dr. Rubilia leave a piece of meaningless info in a hidden compartment? Tian Long, did you find anything else noteworthy on site? Unless... there are more hidden compartments, but... Rupilia doesn't seem like a person who'd bother with it. Right, Lin? Sorry, but I don't have anything for you at the moment, Archon Larson. Please excuse me. I'll need some time to think. We'll call it a day for now. Dr. Clive, you and your team have to decipher and learn what you can from the data retrieved by Lin and Tian Long ASAP. Yes, sir. As for the lockbox, I'll ask our technicians to restore the data and hope for the best. I saw Lin left alone just now with a solemn face. I didn't dare to call her. Is she in some kind of trouble? Miss Lyra unlocked the lockbox and we found a recording left behind by Dr. Rebellion there. It's blurry and, unfortunately, doesn't shed light on anything. Despite that, we found some lab data on Ruby, but what's in the lockbox must be crucial. That's probably why Lin is in a bind right now. Is that so? Then Lin must have gone to... that place. That... place? Lin would sometimes stand on the balcony of the Oasis to think. After Ruby came, she often took Ruby there too. Ruby always said it's her secret base. After everything that has happened, I'm worried about her, but... I have to stay here to watch over Ruby. Can you please check on her for me? Hmm... Well, let's go see Miss Lin for a bit. Even if we can't comfort her, at least we can let her know that we're all there for her. I just wanted to be alone for a while. Sorry for worrying you. How did you find this place? Captain Sakifua told us. It has a nice view, and it's quiet, unlike in the city. Did Ruby draw all those things? 
it's our little secret base. Ruby loves it here. Is that Dolly and Spark? They were best friends. They wouldn't even let me in on their secrets. Ruby's secrets. Secrets. Spark. Spark. How come it only occurs to me now? It's long been left with me. I'll keep Ruby safe. And I'll find you. Just you wait. Spark can help us decode the info in the lockbox? Spark is a support unit specially designed by Rubilia. It may contain a controlled runtime or supplementary data related to the lockbox. What Lin said was... indeed possible. We may have the data, but not a way to read the data. Spark may be the thing we need. Archon Larson, please wait in the infirmary with the rest. I'll take the lockbox there and try to use Spark to decode it. Fine. Get the lockbox to the infirmary, Lyra. choice. Now that I've hit a wall in my research into the gray space entities, I will be going into the confounding abyss. It has what I need to proceed. Maybe I'll solve the mystery surrounding the gray space entities and take them back to you. Or maybe I'll be gone, just like the Forerunners. Anyway, that's all. Good luck to you. And thank you. So Rubilia went there. What does she intend to do? Archon Larson, I suggest that we immediately relaunch the exploration of the Confounding Abyss. If Rubilia was really in there, it would be in our best interest to locate her ASAP. Lin, do you think Rubilia could have survived in a place like the Confounding Abyss? I don't know. However, in the message she left, she said there was something she needed inside the Confounding Abyss. She knew very well how treacherous that place was, and I believe she had taken all precautions. I agree with Miss Lin. Dr. Rubilia's knowledge of the Grey Space Entities far exceeds ours. If we could find her, or at least more of her research data, it would greatly benefit us. Just a moment, you two. Rubilia left this video clip over two years ago. We cannot be sure if she really did go into the Confounding Abyss, or if she is still alive. Even if we are to relaunch the exploration into the Confounding Abyss, it'll take a lot of time to get everything prepared. I trust that no one wants to repeat the same tragedy. Lyra is right. Before we relaunch the exploration, we better be fully prepared for anything. Lifting the lockdown on Confounding Abyss will take some time. Go and take some rest and relaxation. I'll have Captain Saki Fua contact you when we make progress. You look like you have something to say. Miss Lin, what kind of place is that confounding abyss that you just talked about. About that. Few people in Mororia know this, but you should have heard about the Second City, right? We've seen it in the archives. 
Well, about 20 years ago, Mororia's exploration teams discovered a gigantic underground space and proposed plans for a third city. Within the following years, after the underground space was discovered, Mororia must have sent hundreds of explorers in different batches to lay the foundation for the project and explore its depths. Everything was going smoothly, then all contact was suddenly lost. No communication, no responses, everything just went dead. The people, the equipment, there's no sign of either. What's more, its terrain seemed to have undergone drastic changes. Nothing obeyed our known laws of physics. It seemed to be a gateway to another world. So that's why it's called the Confounding Abyss? That's right. Also, based on the images sent back by the droids, there are ruins left behind by an unknown civilization on the other side. It has been a closely kept secret within Mororia. Unknown civilizations? Aliens? We know nothing about those ruins and who built them, but there are signs of gray space entity activity there. Maybe that has something to do with the disappearance of our survey teams. Still, we have no way of safely investigating the area. That's why Mororia locked down the entrance to the Confounding Abyss. Until now. Miss Lin, where exactly is the Confounding Abyss? Now, right beneath our feet and underneath Mororia, lies the pit that is the entrance to the Confounding Abyss. What? If the Confounding Abyss really is that dangerous, why is Miroria still here? There's a subgravity field in the region where Miroria is. Scientists couldn't understand what caused it, but the anti-gravity engines which kept Miroria afloat rely on that field to function. Then, when the Confounding Abyss was discovered, they realized the subgravity field was caused by the Abyss's effects on our laws of physics. In other words, the current state of Mororia relies on the delicate balance between the Confounding Abyss and our reality. But that also makes Mororia a prisoner to the Confounding Abyss. The Second City Project is underway, but it's far from being able to provide for the denizens of Mororia. This may be why Archon Larson is so concerned about relaunching the exploration operations. If our actions somehow broke the balance between the Confounding Abyss and our reality, the whole city would pay for our failure. That's... truly unbelievable. As you can see, this is a very risky operation. We better wait for Archon Larson to make the final decision. Executor, Archon Larson invites the both of you to attend the meeting at the headquarters. It's about the Confounding Abyss. Has Archon Larson decided to relaunch the exploration operations? Maybe. I'm almost at the headquarters. I'll see you in a bit. We called everyone here today for the relevant affairs of Rubilia and Confounding Abyss. I have now decided to relaunch exploration of the Confounding Abyss. Since we all know what the Confounding Abyss has in store for us, Miroria cannot turn a blind eye to the risks this may bring. So I will not be investing too much manpower and resources in this project. We will only be organizing a small recon op to learn the current status of the Confounding Abyss and collect as much intel as possible for further analysis. Also, the primary objective will be to try to locate Dr. Rubilia. Lin, since you started this thing with Rubilia, you should be the one to end it. I will be sending you in with Tian Long. Understood. Archon Larson, I want to be part of this operation. Surely, this mission is highly dangerous. You... I want to unveil the secrets of the Grey Space Entities. Please, allow me to come with you. Count me in. I want to join the operation as well. If that's so, Lyra, why don't you brief everyone? The space inside the Confounding Abyss is too unstable to maintain a space rift for long, so the mission squad will be equipped with a mini space rift generator to establish a temporary space rift. However, please beware that this temporary space rift will only allow a single person to travel through at any given time, 
and will need to be recharged after each use. Additionally, all records show that communication between Miroria and the Confounding Abyss may be prone to heavy interference. Do not be alarmed when this happens. If there are no further questions, we'll meet up at the entrance to the Confounding Abyss. Now that we're all here, let's get ready to head out. Miss Lyra. I will lift the lockdown on the entrance to the Confounding Abyss. However, due to safety concerns, once you're through, we'll lock it down again from this side. You will need to establish temporary space rift nodes within the Abyss ASAP. Miroria will try to maintain communication with you and provide feedback based on your real-time data. Is everyone ready? If you encounter anything more than you can handle, contact us immediately. Do not act recklessly. I will. Let's go. <sighs> it's so quiet here. Stay on your toes and keep moving. Lyra, we've reached the ruins of the Third City. Nothing out of the ordinary so far. Roger that. Communication signal is stable. That's good news. The entrance to deeper levels lies within the ruins of the city. Lynn, locate the entrance as soon as you can and establish a space rift once you're inside. The squad's sensor will feed the environmental data to our technicians and will give you the coordinates of a good location to set up a space rift. What should we do if our communication is down? We know nothing about what goes on inside the Abyss, so trust your training. Right! <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> Thanks! We'll need to establish at least one temporary space rift for the follow-up operations. Time is of the essence. Let's move out. Lyra, we've reached the entrance to the deeper levels. The squad's status is green across the board. We've yet to encounter any abyssant grayspace entities. Roger that. The deeper levels of the alien ruins are located just below. We haven't detected any abnormal spatial fluctuations. You may enter when ready. Has the confounding abyss devoured other regions of the city already? The third city was divided into the upper and lower cities. Where you are now is what used to be the upper city. As for the Confounding Abyss, it's like a ghost that suddenly appeared between the two areas. An existence that defies all logic. A scout drone once reached the bottom of the Confounding Abyss and sent back some images before its signal died. The lower city still exists, but it's beyond recognition, as is the terrain. Get ready. You are about to enter the heart of the Confounding Abyss. It only gets more dangerous inside. Communication with Miroria may be unreliable. Watch each other's backs and be safe. We are now within the Confounding Abyss. We have visuals of the alien ruins. We've detected slight Omnium fluctuations around your area. The nature of those fluctuations matches with the signals from your Space Rift beacons. It's a high possibility that it may be a beacon left behind by Rubilia. You should set up a temporary Space Rift here 
as your emergency extraction point. Understood. We'll look around. Is that... a space rift beacon left behind by Rubilia? Maybe we can try to reactivate it. The Grey Space Entities are still a bit hostile. But at least they didn't attack me on sight. That means my Grey Space Entity Christomax implant is working. This is... A video message from Rubelia. Overall, things are going smoothly. I did lose my supply backpack while scaling the cliff. All I have now is half an energy bar in my pocket. I wonder how long it can last me. I have long passed the point of no return. Maybe this is the end of the journey for me. Lynn, the doctor... She must have left other clues. Continue your search. <sighs> Lyra? Can you hear me? Lynn, go ahead. We found a space rift node and a video message left behind by Rubilia. We're continuing our search. Roger that. Communication. Interference is increasing. Keep in touch. I haven't eaten nor had any water for three days. However, dehydration is not affecting me much. And the feeling of thirst is declining. I think the Christomax implant is changing me. I can feel their special energy within the space that is slowly being absorbed by me. This feeling is becoming more and more tangible. I believe this special energy matter is what sustains the gray space entities. They are unlike us humans. They don't need to turn food into energy. Now, very few gray space entities take note of me, and they are no longer hostile at all. Maybe to them, I'm just a deformed gray space entity. I had a strange dream last night. I... I cannot recall the dream exactly, but I remember the voice I heard in the dream. I can still hear it, even after I woke up. It's... something deep, low, and slow. Not unlike the whale songs in the ocean. But I don't know whether it's in my head playing tricks on me, or is it something real? The Christomax implant may be affecting my central nervous system. I am... slowly losing control of myself. <sighs> I'm running out of time. The Christomax implant is slowly turning the doctor into a gray space entity. I hope she knew what she was doing. The voice in my head still lingers. It's there, calling. I just can't answer it. I've tried to trust that alien ruin, but every time I do, nearby gray space entities get restless, like they are able to sense an infiltrator, but can't figure out who it is. But I'm not sure how much camouflage my alteration gives me, so I'm hesitant to try to reach the ruins again. I need time to change into them. Lyra? Lyra? Communication is cut off. 
Yeah, I can also feel the atmosphere becoming tense around here. Should we keep moving, or wait until the communication is restored? It's highly unstable here. We better not dawdle. Let's keep moving. Whatever you say. I tried to reach the gate to the ruins last night. Those horrific things surrounded me. They looked dumbfounded, but not hostile. I wonder if that means they've accepted me into them. The burning sensation caused by my implant is gone. Any sensations on my skin are becoming dull. My central nervous system is losing functionality. Replaced by a kind of indescribable sensation. The voice in my head is becoming clear, but sharp. And I'm finding it hard to focus my mind on thinking. It's definitely not good news to me. Before the voice in my head completely devours me, what more can I do? Maybe it's time to open that gate. I have a feeling that the answer I seek lies behind that gate. There are no second chances for me now. I, Rubilia, a human, will embrace my own end there. Haranobu, Lin, Ruby, I can only hope that I didn't disappoint you. Our objective must lie within. Lin, do we just go in like this? You're scared? No. It just feels... <laughs> strange. Is it Rubilia? Rebellious body. What did she do to herself? We've detected large numbers of gray space entities converging on your location. Evacuate stat. Understood. The capacity of the space rift is limited. We'll need to go through it in pairs. Tianlong, take her back. Yeah, be careful.
I'm fine. Don't worry. <sighs> That's good to hear. Lin and Tianlong were recalled to headquarters already. And we just received news that Ruby came too. Ruby's awake? Right. Miss Lin said Ruby waking up might have something to do with us rescuing Dr. Rubilia. We better check on her, since you don't have anything to do at the moment. I remember, in my dreams, there's a red eye in the sky. A red eye? The eyes stared at us. I was so scared, so I ran away with Spark. I followed Spark and ran, 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 but then Spark disappeared. I was all alone. Night fell and then... I don't remember what happened. All I remember is that it was dark and cold. Don't be afraid, Ruby. We're here with you. You're back, Executor. Miss Lin, how is Ruby? Lyra said that Ruby woke up from a nightmare, but before she did, she mumbled the name Innes. Innes? Innes was the name of the second city built by Mororia to house its increasing population. It's located northwest of Mororia, and extends all the way from an underground cave to the bottom of the sea. But Ruby has never been to that underwater city. I don't know how she knew about it. Besides, Ruby is yet to be able to accurately debrief us on what she saw in her dream. She does not even remember ever mentioning the name Innes. I mean, she was just woken up and is not completely stable. I plan to let her rest for a few days. Let's go check on Rubilia first. She's in another lab, under Archon Larson's watch. Lynn, are you going away again? We'll be back soon. I promise. without success. Dr. Clive suggests that we transfer Dr. Abilia to the listener testing ground for in-depth studies, but I feel that's... We cannot treat Rubilia as one of them. We'll discuss this later. Tian Long, did you say Dr. Rubilia was found inside an abyssant? More accurately, it's from inside the abyssant's brain. I'm not sure whether the abyssant evolved from Rubilia? or if she shared a kind of symbiotic relationship with it. The Christomax implant caused changes in her, which made common low-level grayspace entities see her as one of them. However, we have no way of knowing if this also works on higher-level abyssins and what the end stage of this evolution would be. Uh, sadly, the Doctor is unable to communicate with us, but judging by Ruby's dreams and how she mentioned Innes, the Doctor must have important things to tell us. Ruby said she saw a glowing red eye in her dreams. I wonder if she's talking about that alien ruin in the Abyss. It does resemble an eye in a glance. But Ruby has never been to the confounding Abyss and seen the ruins. Maybe Ruby and Rubilia share a special bond that links their senses or consciousness. Ruby's dream may be a projection of Rubilia's dreams. I agree with Lin. It also matches the data we found in the lab. The gray space entities share a hive consciousness. Rubilia and Ruby, and even that puppet singer, are all part of the same colony. Right, that makes sense. The message Rubilia left in the Abyss also clearly states that she's been affected by the voices in her head. That voice may come from a higher class Abyssant. But these are all hypotheses. We'll have to wait for Dr. Rubilia to regain her consciousness to be sure. Before that, she could only relay information to us via her shared consciousness with Ruby. Everyone, everything that has happened today is on a need-to-know basis. We cannot reveal Dr. Rubilia and Ruby's identities to the denizens of Mororia. Lyra, you and Dr. Clive must find a way to wake Dr. Rubilia up ASAP. 
In the meantime, the facility must remain secure. <sighs> and about Ruby. Lynn, you'll be responsible for her. Please take care of her. Yes, sir. As for Ennis, we still don't know what Rubilia was trying to say. But if she has really become a part of Abyssin's hive consciousness, then she holds much information that is vital to us. I will have Innes's security level raised. Even though there is currently no gray space entity activity there, Miroria must still be prepared. Is something bothering you, Shirley? Miss Lin has been filling me in on exactly what's going on with Dr. Rebilia these past few days. It looks like Miss Lyra and her colleagues might have found a way to rouse the doctor. Her neural activity is increasing every day. But we're all a bit worried about what form exactly our reunion will take when the good doctor wakes. These concerns have prompted Archon Larson to transfer the doctor to the Silver Coast Research Station. What do you think? Do you think Dr. Rubilia will be back to her old self? Or something other than human? I don't think the process has stripped Dr. Rubilia of her human capacity for reason and thinking. Her actions seem to have a clear purpose. Like how she sent a message to Lin using the puppet singer. Or how she made contact with Ruby in a dream to try to transmit a message to Miroria. And when she bravely ventured alone into the abyss, she also left us with invaluable visual records in her lab and along the way. I think she must have prepared for the possibility that those who might come after her, like us, would need guidance. She must know what she's doing. Think of the sacrifices she's made to understand these gray space entities, and how horrible it must be to keep at arm's length, treated as something potentially dangerous and inhuman. I can't help feeling that we have not done right by her. It's a tough situation, but when she made these decisions, she must have had an inkling of what might happen. I just hope everything she's done will turn out worthwhile in the end. Executor, Miss Shirley, apologies for the intrusion. What is it, Lyra? I just picked up a message from the Silver Coast Research Station. Dr. Rubilia has awoken and revealed some very important information for all of us. Lynn is already on her way there and I wanted to ask you to come with me to help assess the situation. Understood. We'll leave at once. The doctor was only able to rouse herself briefly, which allowed for a short interaction with us. Then she returned to her isolation pod. She released some kind of black fog that has obscured all our attempts to observe what's going on inside the pod. Subsequent attempts at communication have met with no reply. I see. And so what did she tell you? She said that large numbers of gray space entities have been summoned by the Hive Mother and are heading for the deep ocean near Innis, where there are some things they are very interested in. What's this Hive Mother? A gray space entity that's higher up the chain of command? I'm afraid a definitive answer may require the doctor's input. Our main concern right now lies in Innes. The doctor has already warned us numerous times that the second city is in extreme danger. That is, if we are to trust her words. Archon Larson has already put patrols near Innes on high alert. But recently, we haven't received any reports of a gray space entity intrusion, which is perhaps even more disconcerting than if we had. It's possible the gray space entities have found a way to cloak their arrival via an as-yet-undetected method. My next question would be, what exactly is attracting them to the area? Director Ava, did Rebilia say anything more detailed in regard to Ennis? No, and I'm afraid she did not appear to be in the best state of mind. She claimed to be suffering under the effects of the Hive Mother's will, and that she was not able to interact much at all with us as a result. Moreover, she soon disappeared back into the black fog I mentioned. Stasis chamber data anomaly. Miss Lynn, the doctor said. I can hear you. Rubilia. But the hive mother can hear you too.
Where is the Hive Mother? In my head. Whatever I see, whatever I hear, she hears and sees. And I can't escape her, even in this pod. She can sense your surroundings somehow? Using your eyes? Any gray space entity can become the eyes and ears of the Hive Mother if she so chooses. Nor can I do anything to resist her will. I know that when she looks at me, she can see whatever I see. Right now, when the bulk of her attention is still focused on the Ennis artifact under the sea, I can maybe conceal a little bit of what I'm thinking from her. But I'm not sure how long that will last. What is this artifact under the sea that Ennis possesses? I don't know. I can't fully comprehend the will of the Hive Mother. All I know is she's calling me, and the call is getting stronger and stronger. She needs all of her millions of children to go and release her. Release her? The Hive Mother herself is currently imprisoned within a cage of black stone, but the power of the cage is gradually weakening. And when finally that cage is broken, the Hive Mother will re-emerge fully into our world. A cage of black stone? Could it be deep under the sea at Innis? I can't get any kind of accurate sense of the Hive Mother's current location. Perhaps there is a pocket of abnormal space, like the confounding abyss near Innis. It's difficult to imagine what kind of person could have the power to cage the Hive Mother. But I suspect the Blackstone Ruins left in the Confounding Abyss may be their handiwork as well. I don't know much about that. I have no access to the minds of those powerful Abyssins. But as for the inferior, younger, gray space entities, they do not have the ancient memories of the Hive Mother, nor seek to continue her ancient grievances. I'm still trying to establish closer contact with them, and some kind of rapport. But I feel like the closer I get, the less human I become. I just don't know if I can. If I can. Rubilia? The stasis chamber's readout has returned to normal. Her consciousness is fading. Listen carefully. She is keeping a close eye on me. I have to retreat back into the fog. She can use all my senses for her own purposes. Only the fog blocks her vision. Innes, you have to stop her. If what the doctor just said is true, then I'm afraid the entire region may not be the friendly human habitat we imagined. I will inform Hycros headquarters of what has transpired here and request urgent reinforcements. We will have to prepare for the worst. It doesn't look like the doctor is capable of many conversations in her present state, Archon Larson. But she must know even more than what she's managed to reveal. Yes. We'll have to see whether we can minimize or cut off the Hive Mother's influence. It might help to stabilize her. Lyra, can I leave that to you? Dr. Clive will provide all the necessary resources. Yes, sir. For the time being, Dr. Rubilia will have to remain confined within her pod. We can't risk bringing her back to Maroria at this stage. Director Eva, an executor team led by Captain Merrill will help you shore up the research station's defenses. Yes, sir. As for inners, Lynn, can you organize a team to investigate? And if necessary, we may need to stagger an evacuation of Inner's population to Mororia. Understood. Time is against us. I suggest using the long-range space rift located within the station to reach Innis directly. And as for Rubilia, she's in your hands. Don't worry, Miss Lin. We'll look after her. Very well. Executor, Shirley, let's go. Sorry for delaying your important mission, Lin. 
Is the space rift out of action? It seems so. Strange. It was working just fine five minutes ago. Then, when I was running some basic system checks, suddenly, I couldn't locate the space rift beacon in Innis. And why could that be? Well, we're running diagnostics to see if the machine is malfunctioning, but it could be a problem with the relay station or inner zone space rift. Yes, hello? Did you manage to get in touch with the technician in Inners? Oh, what's that? Then... and Outpost 10? Okay, got it. Bad news. Something's happened to Outpost 10. We've lost contact with it. And where is Outpost 10? In the ring-shaped river valley not too far away. Outpost 10 is responsible for servicing our telecommunications and space rift networks with Innis. A problem of this magnitude with Outpost 10 means we've lost contact with Innis altogether. I don't think it's a coincidence. I suspect the Outpost may well have already come under Grey Space Entity's attack. Shelly, please inform Ms. Lyra about this at once. The Executor and I will investigate it personally. Okay, understood. Hear the news? Something's happened to Outpost 10. Don't tell me you're coming too. Of course I am. Archon Larson is quite concerned. I'll wait for you up ahead.